Here he comes, doing a little bit of comedy for you today. Here he comes. You're not taking my one, that's your one. Yeah, that's your one. That's your one. That's your one. Yeah. Uh, we rehearsed this and everything. Yeah. Have only, fun. My, only my wife calls me lovely. I've never been called lovely before. Uh, just a quick little something about myself. I'm originally from Central New York. I practiced law in Rochester, New York for many years and then gave it up, did the Bob Newhart thing, moved to Vermont and became an innkeeper. Ever since that time, I've referred to myself as a recovering lawyer. <laughs> so a year ago, my wife volunteered me for the show without my knowledge, without my consent. A gamer that I am, I did it anyhow. So before I came out, they asked me last year, have you ever done stand-up comedy before? And I said, no, I haven't, but judges have been laughing at me for more than two decades. <laughs> All comedians, I understand, get their material from family, from friends, from experiences they've had, from things they've done, and I'm no different. Uh, I come from a Jewish background, but you don't have to be Jewish to have the kind of family that I have, and you probably can all relate to some of the things I'm going to tell you. One of the earliest memories I have of my mother was going into a deli, and she said to the person behind the counter, I want some corned beef. Mm -hmm. So he gets the corned beef, he puts it up on the slicer, and he says, how much do you want? She says, slice. Well, slice. Well, slice! Stop! I'll take the next three slices. <laughs> My Uncle Zick, uh, unfortunately, when he was in his 70s, had a minor accident. He was hit by a slow-moving car, and the police came, and uh, the policeman took his jacket off, put it under him, and he said, are you comfortable? And he said, I make a decent living. <laughs> and my uncle Vince retired in Florida and a number of years later a Miami policeman found him on a bench and he had tears running down his eyes and he said sir are you okay what's the matter what's wrong and he said well about a year ago I lost my wife but a few months ago I met this lovely woman who's 30 years old she cooks for me she lives with me she does everything for me she's wonderful in the bedroom and I couldn't ask for anything more so the policeman said, well, why are you crying then? And he said, I can't remember where I live. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you a little more about my son, Mark, in a minute. But a number of years ago, when he was younger, he was only five years old, we went to Florida. And we were at the beach uh, with his grandmother. And I went up to get some food. And she was watching him at the beach. And she turned her head for just a minute. A wave came swept him out, took him away, the guards went out, they, they went out in their boats and they swam and they looked and they looked and they finally got him and they dragged him ashore, they gave him CPR and they gave him mouth to mouth and just as I came back he started coughing and the guard turned to, to his grandmother and said he's going to be okay and she said he had a hat. <laughs> Like I said, you don't have to be Jewish. So my son Mark is a policeman and he's very proud of it. He does a good job and I'm very proud of him too. We're all proud of our sons. But not too long ago, he pulled a car over and he walked up and as he got close to the car, the window came down, a very attractive young woman was in the car and she looked at him and she said, I'm guessing you're gonna give me a ticket to the policeman's ball. Well, he, he, he took that as a little bit of an insult, so he got his back up and he looked at her and he said, Ma'am, you're in Vermont. In Vermont, policemen don't have balls. <laughs> at which point there ensued about 20 minutes of 20 seconds of silence where he looked at her, she looked at him, he flipped his ticket book closed, went back to his cruiser, and drove away. <laughs> And finally, there's my Uncle Sam and Aunt Alti, who were flying to, to Hawaii to celebrate their 50th anniversary. Everything was going well until they got just a little bit outside of the island, and an argument ensued. They argued about how to pronounce the name of where they were going. My Uncle Sam said, it's Hawaii. My Aunt Alti says, it's Hawaii. It's Hawaii. He said, no, it's Hawaii. So my Uncle Sam said, look, here's what we're going to do. 
We're going to get off the plane, and we'll ask the first person we see how to pronounce it. So they get off the plane, they walk over, they see a man by the counter, and he says, excuse me, sir, how do you pronounce the name of this place that we just landed? I looked at them kind of funny, and he said, Hawaii. See, Aldi, I told you. I'm right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Please give it up for Brad. Woo! Nicely done. And you said hot coin, you couldn't be clean. Nicely done, nicely done. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next gentleman to come up for you on stage. His name is Chuck. He comes all the way from 